to talk about water rights, it's almost impossible to talk about. Today we're talking about rattlesnakes. And the reason being is I bumped into one yesterday. Now, I have the distinction, I think, I can't, I can't pit myself against you, but you let me know what you think in the comments. But, dude, I have seen more rattlesnakes in my tenure on the planet. I'm 66 years old. I've seen a lot of rattlesnakes. And I have, I've seen the normal amount. Like, I saw this one yesterday, okay? Beautiful snake. And this is what kind of made me think, oh, I should do this. Because, first of all, there's a lot of people who have never seen a rattlesnake in the wild. I know. It's shocking. California, you know, we have more species of rattlesnakes than anybody other than, than Arizona. We have a lot of rattlesnakes, a lot of different kinds of rattlesnakes. So I thought, well, I should address some of the things, misconceptions about rattlesnakes or things to, that you can do to protect yourself. And the first thing you know about rattlesnakes, and I equate them a little bit to white sharks, even though we've seen rattlesnakes more, but white sharks want nothing to do with you, despite what Jaws and a lot of Hollywood wants you to believe. Sharks don't, they, I've been surfing my whole life. They, listen, I've, they go right by you. I've seen them go by me. I've seen, I've, they don't want anything to do with you. It's, a, it's always a big mistake. And rattlesnakes are the same way. So when you're out and about and you do see a rattlesnake, just know you're going to either see it or you're going to hear it, typically is the case. Or most likely you won't see it, which is the case for many. Okay, why have I seen more rattlesnakes than anybody else? Because I lived in Paradise, California. Let me move this up. This is Lake Orville, okay? Biggest, second largest surface reservoir in the state of California. That's huge, right? Because this is a huge water. This, this water goes to LA, a lot of it, almost all of it, I think. So this is, this is, these were all rivers. This, when I moved to Paradise in the 60s, or when I was born up there, this was a river. This was the Feather River and salmon ran up it all the way up into the middle fork of the Feather, West Branch, North Fork of the Feather. It was a canyon with a river in the middle. So somewhere in the late 60s, they go, listen, we're going to, in the, in, for the California Water Project, um, Edmund Brown, uh, Jerry Brown's dad goes, okay, I want to get this done. And it was actually a good plan was to, to, to dam Orville. Shasta had already been dammed to get water that, that is much needed. So the largest earth-filled dam in the world at the time was built. I watched them build this dam. Uh, if you can believe it, I was probably six or seven. And we watched the, the, the lake fill up. We go down almost every, I think we go down like once a week and just sit up, up, up a lime saddle there and watch the, the, the lake fill in. Well, Paradise is right here. I think you can see the map. This was all river. This was, we used to swim down here. And, and, and you know, there's a flume that runs along it and we swim at Nelson's Bar Bridge. But this, as it filled up, began to pull everything out of the canyon. So think about this for a minute. And Orville had the same problem. I just experienced it real time in Paradise, especially on Pence Road. My dad was a veterinarian. So lots of rattlesnake bites because everything in this thousands of miles of square miles or certainly 100 square miles of canyon arid hot perfect landscape for rattlesnakes started coming out started coming out of the canyon it took months or took years for the the lake to fill so for you know, the first year there was a little, you, there was an uptick like in animal bites. We had, because I'm dad's a veterinarian, so it was like boots on the ground. We were seeing lots of animal bites down on Pence Road. And then we realized what was finally, was happening. And we had a lot of rattlesnake bites, on, not a lot, but many rattlesnake bites on kids and people on on Pence Road on that west side of, or on the, that side of town, the west, I guess that's the east side of town. So they came up and out. Now imagine how many came out of this area, right? How many came out, this was all dry. So I've seen a lot of rattlesnakes. And the thing I would say about them is they don't want anything to do with you. They completely are, you know, slow. They don't move that quickly. They hibernate in the winter because they're, 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 um, cold-blooded so think about this right so they when it gets warm enough 80 degrees it's like a hurricane hurricanes start at like 80 degrees right with water temperature um 78 to 80 degrees you can't have a hurricane unless the water's but anyway i digress 80 degree temperature will get you snakes that's when they like to move around at least that's what i'm seeing and that's what the literature says and they may come out earlier but they um they like the 80 degree so with that said Fly fisherman that I am, fish the pit a lot, fish the um, McLeod a lot, fish the upper Sacramento. Snakes owe plenty, especially on the McLeod, lower down, dry, and when it gets hot, they come out. 
And every snake I've seen has been either, I've had a few rattle at me, I've had a ton of experiences with snakes. That's, that's, that's the point of this. But they do, at 80 degrees, if you're out hiking, that's when you're gonna see one. And I'm giving you this as a present now, because if you're not, I'm, lots of you have seen rattlesnakes, but if you've never seen one, do not freak out. And don't be freaked out, don't, don't not go outside into the woods, into the trails, because you're worried about rattlesnakes. Because if you're lucky, you'll see one. If you're lucky, you'll see a white shark. So, uh, what do we got here? Okay, babies are born in the fall. The snakes are most active in the spring, early and late. They stick around in the summer. And then the fall, when they're mating, the babies are, are born. Or not mating, the babies are born. They're mating before that. The babies, when they're born, are kind of, it's kind of confusing because they're not hatched from eggs, like in a rattlesnake nest. They're hatched, they're birthed, right? right? And so they don't, they just kind of, fall out and they spread out so they're not all in the same area so you can see find lots of little snakes kind of spread out they don't have rattles and they're hard to see so in some cases i think the baby rattlesnakes are the scariest one of the best things you can do and i think i got a list of things you can do um is i do have a list of things you can do but one of the best things you can do is take a walking stick with you and when you're walking they feel vibrations they're tap the tapping of the ground um you can tap around bushes to see if they're there and i've tried to get snakes to bite it's almost hilarious you really got to try hard to get a snake to bite a stick they're very i was going to do it with this guy yesterday but i was like i don't want to bug him because it, it's just harassment but i i mean i was little we try to get and they listen they don't even they don't even bite most not most many bites are dry bites it's a warning they have they have their defense mechanisms. They have camouflage. They're you know the diamondback looks like the rocks. We'll show you right here. I think this guy. Yeah. So here's a snake right here. This is a live camera, um, and look how much he looks like the rocks. So that's their camouflage. They they have a dry bite. They have um, rattles on their tail, and they're they're camouflaged. One of the best things you can do is the walking stick. Pets on leash is a good move for sure. Uh, you use your eyes and ears when you're out, which you should be doing anyway. The out, outdoors, that's the other thing. Outdoors isn't Disneyland, man. I mean, you get in trouble, and this is the kind of thing that is out there. He's a big snake for having so few nubs. I haven't seen this guy before. Um, wear leather boots and stay on the trails. They like the trails. They'll be on the trails because they're looking for easy routes to go as well, flat route. But you can see them on the trail. So, so many times I've been down in the river climbing out, and you're going hand over, and you're climbing up no trail. And that's, that's, that's actually a dangerous time. Wow, that's a great shot of a rattlesnake. We have Western Diamondbacks. This is California. This is how many different varieties, again, more varieties than any other state other than Arizona, more species. Uh, Western Diamondback, which is what we're looking at or what we've been, what I saw with the first pictures I showed you from today. The North Pacific Rattlesnake, the South Pacific Rattlesnake, the Mojave Rattlesnake, the Red Diamondback Rattlesnake, the Speckled Rattles, Rattlesnake, all those. And they're funny because in, they're in, when you find them, they're in weird places. Like when I, I work for a company called LSA, here's another live camera. Um, again, a little pre-recorded because I just grabbed the best shot. So it's live and they're just digesting food or something. You see them both sitting there. And that's a great shot. That's on the PCT, Pacific Crest Trail, above the McLeod River. There's a rock outcrop. I almost feel like that's where it is, <laughs> but it's not. Um, that looks just like that. But look at how hard they are to see. I've walked by many rattlesnakes in my time. And then the guys behind me go, did you see a rattlesnake? I nah, didn't see it. Because they blend in. They blend in so, so well. Um, they do this thing. I used to work for a company called LSA, um, which was an environmental planning firm. When I was out of, when I just finished, I think I was out of meteorology school. I was out of atmospheric science, and I was doing air quality stuff for environmental impact reports. And we basically saw that you know the the um, the snakes. You know, we didn't see. We we went out in the field, and we would do transects they'd call me off the air quality jobs to go do transects which are like we just we're doing like looking for we're looking for endangered species we're looking mainly for kit not kit fox and hoop snakes but in the process of looking for hoop snakes which were endangered at the time we were bumping into rattlesnakes day after day after day after day after day we used to wear rattlesnake chaps which are leather pants that they can't cannot bite through and i got very comfortable i worked with a guy named don can't remember his last name anymore he was awesome like he'd pick them up he was a he was a real he was in the old school but he was i learned a lot about rattlesnakes from don um and the, and what the thing i learned most is they're everywhere 
and they want nothing to do with you. And these two snakes clearly want nothing to do with most people. But what Don would do, we would do, it was kind of weird we'd do this, but it was fun. He'd go check this out and we'd go grab up and this was up above Turlock, up in the hills up there, kind of on the backside of the Lawrence Livermore testing facility out in the valley. We'd find big sheets of metal and we'd lay them down, right? And you'd lay them down, leave them out there. And then you'd come back the next day and be snakes under it because they would be right that the metal heats up they love being under something hot so he knew instinctively and i think rattlesnake guys I, i'm sure some of you guys are rattlesnake guys um you know where to find them i'm pretty good at finding them especially in an outcrop like that um but i'm i there's people who know right where they are so yeah now yeah, that was interesting so i have a lot of experience with the rattlesnakes i do um they do this thing where they're really slow to cross the road you ever i just saw one the other day that was smashed and you think, God, they, who, who, I always kind of go, who's the, you know, who's the dick that ran over a rattlesnake? Because you think they just go around it, but the snakes are so slow. They don't, they, it takes them forever to get across the road. So you think that you, in your dreams, you think it's like a Steven Spielberg or Steven, uh, or who's that guy? Oh gosh, the scary author guy, mm, Stephen King, kind of like a, you know, scary monster that moves quickly and they move very slowly. Rattlesnakes, from my understanding, when they're laid out flat, they can't do anything, right? It's when they're coiled, they can usually strike to about half the distance of their length. So that's, that's when you watch. When a snake is coiled, then they have some, some range. I've never seen a snake, a big, even a big snake, I've never seen a big snake go out much further than that, right? So if you're that far back, you're usually pretty good. I wouldn't mess with it, though. But again, they're very predictable, the snakes. Um, I think they are. They keep rodents down. Rodents are... Probably one of the, you know, that's one of their prime foods. And the rodents um, often carry diseases. So you don't, you want rattlesnakes around. I mean, have you ever seen how a, a red-tailed hawk grabs a rattlesnake? They'll grab it. They'll take, like this guy I saw yesterday. That's why I wished him off the road. Because I go, you're going to get a red-tailed hawk after your ass. And you're going to get clomped on. The hawk will take them way up in the air and then drop them, right? To try to avoid the bites. Just try to kill them so they can, can eat them. Um, but they do keep rodents down. They're slow to cross the road. Uh, I think, let's see what else we got. This is the number of species of rattlesnakes in the state of California. And that's the same as Arizona. That's a lot. And there's other rattlesnakes, like one to three. Everybody, look at the, the country. Everybody's got some rattlesnakes, man. I did not know that. Look at that. One to three species. I knew Florida did. Um, is it venomous snakes or number of species? Rattlesnakes, yeah. I thought, hmm. Maine's got none. Okay, if you don't like rattlesnakes, you know where to go. These are some of the different types of rattlesnakes. There's a lot. There's, uh, I named them the North Pacific Rattlesnake Mojave. Um, they look alike. And one of the things I remember seeing a lot when we were doing the transects, there's a live camera. This is up in the valley. And it was in an area like this. We were walking through waist-high or knee-high brush in the spring right, because we had to do the transects for this EIR looking for hoop snakes, I believe. But we basically ran into them all day and all night. They were, they were, there were lots of, and lots of rattlesnakes. But they love that dry brush, and they love to be, like I said, in interesting places, like we, with that tin plate we would put down the, up under a piece of wood, under something warm. Um, I saw a rattlesnake one night. We, used to, we did this thing. This is more rattlesnake habitat. This is kind of up in the valley as well. This is the Mojave Desert area. A lot of rattlesnakes down there, most certainly. This is, hmm, there's no rattlesnakes there. Yeah, there is. This is Santa Clara Valley, Silicon Valley. There's rattlesnakes there. For sure there are. And up in these hills, up around Mission Peak and up around Mount Hamilton, definitely rattlesnakes. And then this is San Diego, where there is a lot of rattlesnakes as well. So it's, um, you know, they're everywhere. And you just kind of got to get used to them. I think this is the live camera again. Let's see if we can get one to come out for us. Uh, let's see in here. Maybe another one. Let's see. Um, so I got, yeah, so I had something else to say about rattlesnake. Oh, one of the things I love is, um, well, first of all, what did we learn? We learned they want nothing to do with you. We learned that they are cold blooded. We learned that they don't hatch babies from eggs. They hatch them. They, they're born. So they're a little more spread out. If you get bit, there's a chance it will be a dry bite. Hopefully your best bet is a walking stick and, um, hard shoes, put your pet on a leash. You're lucky to see a rattlesnake. Oh, there is one right there, huh? You can see his rattlers. You can see him. And that, see that? Isn't that crazy? Look how hard it is to find them. But they're nothing to be scared of. And again, I've, I've been climbing up the side of a hill and had a rattlesnake right here. And you know what they do? They take off. 
They don't, they only coil when they get stuck in the spot. Like if you really trap them up in a, a rock, a bench, like if you walked up on this dude, he'd coil for sure. But they only do that, you know, when they're, when they, when they can't, when they can't escape, they would much rather escape. I would love to hear your, um, your rattlesnake stories and what you've learned. And because a lot of it is, you know, there's a lot of myth and mythology about rattlesnake. Most rattlesnake bites are on the hands or on the wrists or on the fingers is where most rattlesnake bites are. And here's a little interesting statistic, which is kind of, kind of sad. It's like 80, 78% of people who get bit by rattlesnakes are drunk. I'm like, yeah, I get it. I get it. Because I was playing with that rattlesnake yesterday. I wasn't drinking. I was on my bike ride. But I'm like, yeah, if I had a couple coldies, I would have tried to get a selfie with I wouldn't have. But I think people do, unfortunately. And so most rattles, so let's, let's just push it to 80%, are people who are doing stupid stuff. Kind of maybe like I was doing yesterday. I didn't get that close. But I, I had some knowledge. But if you're drinking and you don't know much about snakes and you don't know they can strike half the distance of their, ooh, look at that half the distance of their length you're gonna you're gonna make that mistake so um you know so yeah you know there you go um they keep the rodents down they're good for they're good for the environment and don't be scared of them i'd love to hear your stories any insights you have on rattlesnakes they are a part of the landscape and they ain't going away anytime soon um i had one more fact about so that we're talking about the um people waste drunk they get you get oh there's 39 people, 39 million people live in California, which I did not know. 39 million. Of those 39 million, 800 a year get bit by rattlesnakes. That kind of sounds like a lot to me, but it, it's only one in 50,000. So the chances are, you know, it's manageable stuff. But again, you're going to bump into these. As you saw on the map of the United States, they're everywhere and they are awesome. And they're beautiful and they are, you know, I did, told you my story about the swimming rattlesnake. I was fishing in the river. I was, um, I don't, maybe I didn't tell you this story yet. I think I told it a couple minutes ago, but a couple uh, days ago. But I was standing in the McLeod River and I'm fly fishing away. And I'm on the river and I'm up to my waist in the water. And you can't move. And I'm, you know, just, it's pretty wild up there. There's a lot of bears and snakes and stuff, but it's whatever. And I'm alone. And down the side of this hill comes this big old rattlesnake. And I'm watching him. And I'm in the river, maybe. And he's probably 20 feet away. And he just keeps coming. And I go, dude, stop. What are you doing? He keeps coming, coming, coming. He gets to the water's edge. I go, okay, he's just getting some water. And I can see him. He, again, he's probably, now at this point, he's 10 feet away, 12 feet away. A little further than the camera. And he, she, jumps in the water. Or, you know, they don't jump, really. But they slither in slithers in the water and starts drifting downstream. And now I'm standing there and here comes this snake that's solid, solid four feet, big fat snake. And I'm like, great, right, this is how it goes. This is how it ends. Cause you know, this is before I realized, this was an early encounter probably 20 years ago. And uh, he, he, she came right by me, came right in front of me about now about six feet off. Now the current, remember I'm standing, I'm stationary. The current's pushing this snake right towards me. And I'm in a spot where you know, that's where the current's pushing me. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm getting ready to do whatever I got to do. But I got no no defense other than I'm going to get bit in the stomach by a rattlesnake. And what happened was the snake, and this is how you know they don't want you, literally looks up and goes, Ooh, what are you doing here? And about two feet in front of me, just squirt it off. And they're not fast on the, on the roads, but they're fast in the water. Okay. Anyway, that was fun. Appreciate you listening. Tell a friend. Love to hear your story about rattlesnakes. And uh, it's California, man. You know, it's an awesome state. It's one of the few. It's one of the. It's one of the little inconveniences. Plus, I'd miss them. It's like mountain lions. You'd miss them. Okay, I'll see you back here. I'll do my. Oh, I do my weather every day. So if you do follow, check it out. I do West Coast weather every day, which is kind of what I do. This is a sidebar. See you back here.